Hi, today we will look into the design of the cone clutch, working principle of the cone clutch. The cone clutch uses two identical conical surfaces to transmit torque by friction. The conical surface results in considerable friction force even with a small engaging force due to wedge action. When the clutch is engaged, the friction surfaces of the male cone are in contact with the female cone due to the force of the spring. When the clutch is disengaged, the male cone slides against the spring force. We look into some of the applications of the cone clutch. Cone clutches are used in sports car in different vehicles like this. It is also used in racing cars like Ford, Lancia, McLaren, Porsche and they are also used in Formula 1 races. Cone clutches are also used in motorboat racing. They are manufactured by the companies called Bayliner, Mastercraft, Almacraft, Yamaha, Sire and Sido. Let us look what are the disadvantages of the cone clutch. High maintenance is required because very little wear can cause a considerable amount of the actual movement of the inner cone. It becomes very difficult to disengage if the cone angle is smaller than required. For easy disengagement, the cone angle should be exactly as required. There are two ways by which we can solve this problem. One is by uniform pressure, the other is uniform wear. In the figure, you can observe that there is a male cone and the male cone is subjected to a uniformly distributed load with the pressure intensity which is called as P. We understand that in uniform pressure theory that P that is the pressure intensity, normal pressure intensity is always constant. When we look into uniform wear theory, we can see that the male cone is subjected to uniformly varying load and the maximum ma uh, pressure acting is called as PA. Whereas pressure is maximum at the inner radius and minimum at the outer periphery. The maximum pressure intensity at the inner radius D by 2 is denoted by PA. In the uniform wear theory, P into R is always constant. That means the pressure intensity and the radius is always constant. In this particular diagram, you can observe that here the pressure intensity is very high but the radius is quite less. That is the least in this particular cone. Whereas at the other end, the pressure intensity is very less but the diameter is quite big. So this particular theory is called as uniform wear theory. Now there are some formulas that we will be using in this cone clutch and the difficulty with one of these things are that the formulas are not given in the design data book. In fact, uh, the design, PSG design data book does not speak anything about the cone clutch. So there are some formulas we need to remember. If we are going to solve it by uniform pressure theory, here P is constant and operating load is given by capital P. You have to understand that here small p is the normal pressure intensity that is acting on the male cone whereas capital P is the operating load. So operating load can be found out by this formula pi into P upon 4. Here small p is the pressure intensity that is normal pressure intensity. Capital D is the bigger side of the cone and small d is the lower side of the cone. We can find out the torque based on the intensity of pressure. So this empty formula is based on small p. So it we can find out the torque based on intensity, pressure intensity. 
and let us look into uniform wear in uniform wear you know that p into r is constant so operating load p can be found out with the particular formula as displayed here here we don't use p but we use pa where pa is the maximum pressure intensity so the difference between uniform pressure and uniform wear is in uniform pressure for calculation we use normal pressure intensity and in uniform wear we use maximum pressure intensity for calculation purpose here also we can find out the torque based on maximum pressure intensity pa so you can see there is a difference in formula as well because in the denominator there is 12 sin alpha here in the denominator there is 8 sin alpha so the formulas are different as well as the pressure intensities there is normal in case of uniform pressure and maximum pressure intensity in case of uniform wear now we can also find out pressure uh, we can find out torque okay on the basis of operating load so when you look into this formula of uniform pressure you will see that there is no small p in this formula so this particular formula is entirely based on operating load that is capital p and this particular formula is re with respect to radius so the heading torque based on operating load p with respect to radius if you see the formula just below this you can see that torque based on operating load p with respect to diameter so this is a small change here and this formula again is based on operating load that is capital p but diameters are used instead of radius that is the only difference different books use different formulas and you should not be confused that is why i am showing you the both the formulas with respect to d and with respect to r both of them are same now uniform wear theory again the same way torque based on operating load p with respect to radius now here you can see that everywhere r is used capital r and small r so this formula is based on operating load and we then small radius is used to find out the torque now here to find out the torque mt we are using capital d and operating load so these are the some differences and this formula is not there in the design data book so you have to remember it let us look into the question the engine developing 30 kilowatt power is fitted with a cone clutch built into the flywheel at 1250 rpm the cone has a face angle of 12.5 degree and mean diameter of 3 350 mm the mu is 0.2 and normal pressure on the clutch face is not to exceed 80 kN per meter square time of engagement is 0.2 seconds and engagement takes place 80 times per hour design the cone clutch determine the following required face width force necessary to engage the clutch let us look into the answer we'll start with the given data so the power to be transmitted is given 30 kW n that is the speed with which the clutch is rotating 1250 rpm mean diameter of the cone is given as 350 mm semi cone angle is also given that is alpha 12.5 degree coefficient of friction is given as 0.2 the normal pressure on the clutch face is given which is 80 kN per meter square now application as given in, in the question is engine pa that is maximum pressure intensity at the inner radius is not given so we can assume that normal pressure is equal to the maximum pressure intensity considering wear theory now we can understand that in the question particular theory to be gone about is not discussed a designer can select pressure theory or wear theory it is a designer's choice so therefore pressure theory is something that we use when the clutch is new 
Wear theory is used when the clutch is worn out or is used for certain period of time. Hence, it would be good choice to use wear theory. In the question, maximum pressure intensity is not given and therefore we will assume that the normal pressure intensity given in the question that is 80 kN per meter square is the maximum pressure intensity if at all we are going with wear theory so let us conclude we will consider wear theory to solve this problem there are different components in the cone clutch the important parts of the cone clutch are input shaft which is having a key and a keyway slot the output shaft is splined it consists of a cup which is a driving unit and is also called as female cone cone is the driven unit and is called as the male cone it consists of spring shifting collar and housing now this is the diagram of the cone clutch as we can see this particular part the blue colored part is called as the cup the cup is connected with the shaft which is called as driving shaft ds2 with the help of the key now the cup is connected with the cone the cone is shown in the brown color and between the cone and the cup there is friction material which is shown by the green color you can see this at the bottom as well friction material the cone is connected with the shaft using splines hence the shaft you can see is a spline shaft and it has three slots slot number one slot number two and slot number three designating spline shaft now at the end of this particular hub of the cone you can see there is a slot here this slot is called as the shifting collar where we have the fork that comes in contact with this particular shifting collar and it pulls it backwards against the spring, spring force Hence, the male cone will be pulled behind and the clutch will be disengaged. The purple color is the one called as spring as written here engaging spring. The engaging spring to the end it has a collar. This particular collar keeps the spring aligned and restricted and the shaft you can see there is a step in the shaft at the end this shaft is called as ds1 the semi cone angle that is the angle made by the particular cone clutch is 12.5 degree so this is given in the question and you can see the whole diagram is in engaged position so when the engine rotates the power comes to the driving shaft the cup rotates then from the cup the cone rotates and from the cone you can see the output shaft rotating so this is the sequence of flow of the cone clutch we can also observe in the disengaged position the cone is pulled behind along the axis with the help of fork the fork pulls it behind against the force of the spring and the disengagement takes place let us look in some of the terminologies in the cone clutch capital D is the outer diameter of the cone clutch d minimum is the mean diameter of the cone clutch small d is the inner diameter of the cone clutch alpha is semi cone angle of the cone capital n is rotation speed of the cone clutch 
small b is the face width of the friction lining p is the total operating force it can be also represented sometimes by w small p is the intensity of the pressure of the radius r from the axis of the clutch pa is maximum pressure intensity at the inner radius mu is the coefficient of friction there are some design considerations for the cone clutch it is working in ambient temperature that is ta is equal to 27 degree celsius the parts should be interchangeable the parts need to be machinable considering uniform wear theory and strict requirement of coaxiality of the two shafts the two shafts need to be exactly coaxial so that the wear and tear is quite less so the cone and the cup has to be manufactured with exact dimension and minimum tolerance this is the cone and in this particular cone we can see that at the inner radius the pressure intensity is the highest at the outer radius the pressure intensity is the least capital d is the diameter of the larger section and small d is the diameter of the smaller section in between we can take an element so d mean is 350 mm as given in the question the operating force p is acting at the bigger section that is capital d the whole trapezium we can call it as ab fd and the semicolon angle you can see at this particular at the angle a can be 12.5 degrees so this is the diagram of the cone let us look into some force analysis of the cone this is the cone as you can see and the trapezium you can say it as a b f d so this is a b f d now the inner thing is called as d and it can be divided into radius radius at the upper section and radius at the lower section diameter of the larger section now this small triangle as you can see triangle a b and c okay this triangle the height is d r and the total height you can say is from the axis is r plus dr now trying to analyze this triangle abc in triangle we can see that alpha is the angle made by angle a so we can say that sin alpha is equal to d by d into 2 into b this is in terms of diameter we can do this in terms of radius as well so it will become capital r minus small r upon b in terms of radius now we can find out one of the sides using this formula you can see the side ab is designated as small b and small b is the face width where the friction lining is placed and the torque transmission happens through the friction lining design of the cone the material for the cone can be taken as gci 25 now gray cast iron is selected for the part because the part is complicated and complex in nature and cannot be made or is very difficult to make by the machining process now there are certain advantages of selecting gci 25 Casting is easy production process and can avoid costly manufacturing process. Gray cast iron has the ability to damp vibrations. The cost is low. It can be welded but not that easily as mild steel. So we can do the machining process and final tolerancing can be done. The SUT for GCI 25 is 250 newton per mm square. And for one of the criteria for selecting the material is for easy disengagement the cone angle should be exactly as required so intensive care has to be taken while casting the component
torque transmitted now the torque transmitted by the cone clutch can be found out from the power formula we know power is equal to 2 pi nt by 60 and the power is given the speed is known so we can calculate the torque so torque comes around 229.183 10 raised to 3 Newton mm now we know some basic formulas as well the mean radius is equal to r1 plus r2 upon 2 we can also write it in terms of diameter where mean diameter is equal to capital D plus small d upon we can rearrange the same formula the torque based on the operating load p we this is the formula we know we have seen earlier and this formula is not there in the design data book here we are trying to find out the torque on the basis of operating load we can substitute the equation b in the equation 1 here mt is equal to mu into p upon 4 into sin alpha multiplied by 2 d mean minus d plus d so minus d and plus d gets cancelled so now we can say that mt is equal to mu into p upon 4 into sin alpha and we know here the torque we know alpha we know d minimum so we can find out from this equation what is the operating force that is capital p once capital p is known to us which is 1417.26 Newton we will use another formula of the operating load that is capital P is equal to pi into PA into D upon 2 multiplied by capital D minus small d so this is the formula for the wear theory so we are using the wear theory here and in this particular equation we know capital P and we know D mean but small d is unknown to us so we'll put the value of capital P and find out the value of small d. When we try to put the values, known values, d comes around 334 mm. So that is the approximate value of small d. Now we can calculate capital D once we know small d. So capital D comes around 366 mm. We know the relation sin alpha is equal to d capital D minus small d upon 2 into b. So in this equation we don't know what is small b that is the face width of the friction lining. So after substitution small b is 74 mm in the question they have asked actual force required for the clutch engagement so this is the formula for the actual load required for the clutch engagement this formula is not given in the phd design data book but it is it appears in various books like vb bandari shigley and all so this formula is there in the vb bandari as well and i have taken it from there and all other formulas are from vb bandari so we can substitute the values coefficient of friction is given in the question that is mu is equal to 0.2 after substitution we get the axial force fa as 2695.82 newton friction material of the cone clutch the friction material in the psg given is given as compressed asbestos in many countries the asbestos are banned in modern times friction material of the cone clutch is called as organic also known as fiberglass silicon dioxide and some metal sometimes kevlar ceramics and metallic compounds are also used design of the shaft now this shaft is connected to the cone as it is splined shaft material is c45 low cost and it is easily available and we know the factor of safety we have taken it as 4 and we can calculate sigma t and uh, tau these are all design values so after calculating these values we have the formula for the torque we will put the values in the torque formula and we will get the uh, ds1 as the diameter of the shaft which is 30 mm so this is the figure which shows the uh, the representation of spline shaft so you can see the splines are present on the shaft and there is a step and then the diameter continues now we know that since it is a spline shaft we have to take the spline shaft in this case so ds1 is 30 mm so when we go to psg 5.30 for spline shafts the closest value to 30 is 32 mm so selecting 8 into 32 into 36 mm where 8 is the number of splines as seen in this figure 32 is a minor diameter 
36 is the major diameter and 6 is the width of the spline so you can see B here that is the width of the spline now in case of design of the input shaft also we will take the same diameter so the input shaft will have the diameter as 32 mm but what is special about the input shaft is that the input shaft does not have splines it will be attached to the hub of the cup with the help of keyways let us summarize the dimensions of the cone this is the diagram of the cone the hub diameter is equal to 1.5 times the shaft diameter so it is 54 mm so we can see 54 mm here that is the hub diameter the length of the hub is 2 times the shaft diameter so 2 into 36 we can see here as 72 as the length of the hub length of the complete cone now length of the complete cone will depend upon length of the hub plus some margin so we know the length of the hub that is 72 mm plus margin of 20 mm takes it to 92 so LC1 that is length of the complete hub is gi given as 92 mm the outer diameter of the cone clutch 366 mm the mean diameter is already given as 350 mm in the question inner diameter of the cone is 334 you can see here 334 is the inner diameter semi cone angle is 12.5 degree given in the question and the face width of the friction lining is 74 mm so you can see here this is the 74 mm the face width of the cone now let us move to the design of the spring as we know there are two springs tension spring and compression spring and we'll select helical compression spring and that suits our application and the application for which the spring is used is for the engine material for the spring can be taken as 50 CR1 V23 Sigma UT is 1250 Newton per mm square and modulus of rigidity is 0 0.8 into 10 raised to 5 Newton per mm square consider inner diameter of the spring now the inner diameter of the spring depends upon the shaft diameter plus some radial clearance we know the shaft diameter is 36 mm and some radius um, radial clearance on both the sides can it can be 3 mm on one side so the inner diameter comes after calculation as 42 mm we'll start with the design of the spring consider inner diameter of the spring as di so we have calculated di that is 42 mm we'll assume the spring index spring index is 6 so we know the formula capital D by small d is equal to 6 we know also the relation capital D is equal to di plus small d so since we have assumed spring index capital D becomes 6d and hence we can calculate the small diameter that is coil diameter that comes around 9 mm and hence we can also find out the mean coil diameter which is capital D to be 54 mm now the maximum actual force acting on the clutch so we know the pressure intensity that is 0 0.0844 Newton per mm square this is something that is given in the question now Q is equal to n sin alpha we know that Q is the maximum actual force so the formula for the cone clutch for maximum actual force is pi into 2 brm into pa into sin alpha so we know all the factors here so we can substitute and the maximum actual force comes around 1486.37 newton the shear stress on the spring we know this formula from PSG 7.100 so once the shear stress we know the formula we need to calculate the wall stress factor since it depends upon spring index and spring index we have assumed the walls stress factor KS comes around 1.2525 from the PSG 7.102 we can select the design tau which is 0 0.324 multiplied by Sigma UT now we know Sigma UT so the design tau comes around 405 Newton per mm square putting this in the formula known earlier we can calculate the induced tau which comes around 351.164 Newton per mm square which is less than the design tau that is 405 Newton per mm square hence 
our design is safe. Assume actual deflection of the spring during disengagement to be 10 mm. We know the formula of actual deflection that is given in page number 7.100. So substituting that we will get the value of n. We know P1, we know C that is spring index that is G capital G is the modulus of rigidity and small d is the coil diameter. So after substituting n comes around 2.23 which can be round totaled to an even number as 4 number of coils. Considering square and ground ends total number of coils n plus 2 is equal to 4 plus 2 is equal to 6. So total number of coils is 6. Let us look into the construction of the cup. Material of the cup GCI 25 and it is given in the PSG page number 1.4. So assuming DS1 is equal to DS2 so shaft diameter is assumed so it comes around 36 mm. Hub diameter is DH so we know DH1 so we can keep same the hub diameter as DH1 so DH1 is equal to DH2 which is 54 mm. Length of the hub LH2 as you can see here this is the length of the hub so we can keep that also same as 72 mm. Face width of the cup you can observe that the face width of the cup is little bigger than the face width of the cone. So I am putting some margin to it. So the face width of the cup B1 becomes 94 mm. Now few more dimensions are left out. When you look into this diagram you can see this triangle. So this is a triangle and it makes an alpha degree which is semi cone angle. So semi cone angle is 12.5. So we know what is B1 that is 94 mm and we know alpha we can find out this dimension this side which is already calculated. So this is the triangle that I have made 12.5 degree is the semicone angle B1 is 94 mm. So I try to calculate this and this comes around 93.79. Once that is done I can calculate LC2. Now LC2 is the length of the complete cup. So I know LC2 is equal to LH2 that is the hub length minus the web thickness TW is the web thickness and minus extra uh, length in the hub so minus 10 minus 5 plus the total length from this point of angle that is 93.79 so calculating this values LC2 comes around 150.79 mm and thickness of the web we have assumed as 10 mm so overall dimensions now overall dimension of the cup from here to here capital D is 366 we came to know this from the dimensions of the cone itself so adding 10 above and below will help us to find out D overall which comes around 386 mm let us look into the thermal analysis of the cup the heat generated during each engagement of the cone clutch is given by the formula design torque multiplied by the average angular displacement during the slip multiplied by number of clutching operations carried out in one second. So we know the torque which is already known to us and we can find out the time of engagement that is you can say 0.2 seconds. Note if the slip time is not given in the equation assume suitable value. So you can assume like 0 0.2 0 0.3 as time of engagement. Now average angular displacement during the slip is omega average into time. So omega 1 we know is 0 and omega 2 is we can find out 2 pi n by 60 upon 2 will give us average value so multiplied by time. So the unit for this particular average angular displacement during the slip the unit is radians. Now we will substitute the values we know this is 2 pi n by 60 and the earlier omega 1 it is not rotating so it is 0. So multiplied by time 0 0.2 seconds so it comes around 13.08 radians. Number of clutching operations is given in the question 80 times per hour. So it comes around 0 0.0222 engagements per second. Now the heat generated we can put it up all together multiplying with the torque and then the average angular displacement during the slip and multiplied by the number of clutching operations. So heat generated comes around 66.54 joules per second. Now let us calculate the thermal analysis of the cup. Now in this we need to find out heat dissipated during each engagement of the cone clutch. So we will only consider convection and we will neglect radiation because it is too minimal. So with it is H into A multiplied by Tc minus Ta where H is the 
heat transfer coefficient and we know it's a constant for a forced breezing flow and we know ta is the ambient temperature tc is the temperature of the cup a is the area through the heat dissipation so we'll calculate the area in this regard heat dissipated area of the cup can be given with the help of this particular diagram now we know that a is pi by 4 into d overall square so this the whole circle by which the heat can be dissipated so that area is needs to be considered and the depth of the cup so depth of the cup which is the back side of the cup can also dissipate heat so it is pi d overall into lc2 so we know d overall we know lc2 we can find out the area so area comes around 0 0.299 meter square the next step is we'll equate heat dissipated and heat generated so we have calculated heat generated heat dissipated we know all of them except tc and TC turns out to be as 308.87 degree Kelvin which is 35.87 degree Celsius which is less than 60 degree Celsius so since the temperature TC is less than 60 degree Celsius we can come to conclusion that no blower is required for the particular system let us look into the thermal analysis of the housing of the cone clutch now the cone clutch is being placed in a particular housing now housing is closed from all the sides except the bottom side we will se select suitable material for the housing which can be C30 TH is the thickness of the housing you can see the housing with contain the width the length and the height all of these three dimensions will depend upon the overall dimensions of the cone clutch so let us calculate the overall dimensions of the cone clutch understanding how the heat will be dissipated so first we need to find out lc final lc final is what is the total length of the cone clutch from this side to that side so let us assume that the shaft distances are quite with less so in that case because shaft is going out of the system so we'll consider from this point onwards to that point so this much part we will assume that will be within the housing so I have found out the width of the cone LC2 final that is LC2 plus LC1 by 2 now LC2 is the length overall length of the cup and LC1 is the over length of the cone but since the cone much of it is within the cup itself we will consider only half of the cone to be outside the cup hence this is LC1 by 2 therefore now the value comes around 150.79 plus 92 by 2 so 92 is LC1 so this comes around 196.79 mm this calculation is based on the figure now D overall is 386 mm from the figure of cup okay now this is already we have calculated earlier now to find out length and height so assume that the length and the height of the particular housing is same so it will depend upon D overall plus clearance plus housing thickness so D overall we know we will assume clearance to be 10 mm and housing thickness to be 10 mm so the total dimension comes around 406 mm let us talk about the width now this is the total width of the cone so with the clearance and the housing thickness so LC final we have already found out depending upon the total lengthwise dimension of the cone and the hub so it will depend upon LC final clearance and housing thickness so we have taken housing thickness to be 10 mm 5 mm both the sides okay so now w comes around 216.79 mm the next point is to find out the area so we know that there are two areas two times length into height height into width and width into length this area is double two times and i will show it in the figure so we have this one area so this is one side from heat dissipation that is another side so it is of the same dimensions so we have this one side that one side okay and we have it on one more side so the top side is there and the bottom side and back side and front side so we have all these sides 
but we know that the bottom side is not there so we'll subtract the bottom side from the total calculations so we have here two times length into height height into width and width into length but we know the bottom side is not there so we are subtracting length into width from the bottom side since we have taken two times of that so after putting up the values the a comes around 0.59 meter square after calculating the area as 0.59 meter square we'll equate the heat dissipated and heat generated now for heat dissipated the heat transfer coefficient for free air blowing is from 2.5 to 25 watt per meter square kelvin so we can take it as 15 watt per meter square kelvin somewhere in between that and this information is available from science direct research paper after equating heat generated and heat dissipated and putting up the values we can find out the th now th is the temperature of the housing and heat generated value that is 66.54 we have calculated earlier from the heat generation between the cup and the cone th turns out to be as 307.47 kelvin and it turns out to be as 34.47 degree celsius this particular value of th is less than 60 degree celsius hence we can come to conclusion that we need not require any blower or coolant at this point we end the cone clutch design